My name's Steve Rose and you're listening to a recording of a presentation given at the IABC conference in September 2018. This presentation is intended to encourage you to read our paper which concerns application of finite element methods to masonry bridges. Now, masonry arch bridges aren't exactly new. For example, Pont de Garde here is nearly 2,000 years old and many other landmarks of Europe are masonry bridges. Some are tourist destinations, but many more are admired every day simply because they're used every day. They form a large part of the highway and railway network. For example, in the UK, there are probably 60,000 masonry arch bridges in use. And they are incredibly durable, mainly because there's nothing in them which rusts. And they are incredibly resilient. Many of them carry traffic loads which would have been unimaginable to the people who constructed them so many years ago. But, as well as the traffic loads increasing with time, the strength of these structures does reduce as well. That may be due to weathering, settlement or scour, creep deterioration under sustained loads and fatigue under cyclic loads. Human activity is also a cause of damage, vehicle impacts, vandalism or even bad repair work from the past. For each bridge we have to decide, do we need to take any action to save the structure? If so, what? It might be repair, strengthening or load restrictions, for example. To decide, we rely upon inspection regimes and a structural assessment. This needs to be based on a sound understanding of the behaviour of the structure. Best information about the bridge and an understanding of the limitations imposed by uncertainty, which is inherent in studying older structures. The analysis options may be broadly categorised as simple methods, such as mechanism or MEXI calculations, or advanced analyses, which can take into account cracking and crushing of the masonry materials, ring separation and soil structure interaction. In this simple finite element model, we've represented a masonry arch with a non-linear material which can crack and crush. And we can see in this animation that hinges are formed. And the load carried by this model, before we see the structure collapsing, is about 38 tonnes. And this is the behaviour we should expect, because typically, as an arch is loaded at approximately a quarter span, cracking occurs under the loaded area and in the extrados of the arch at a similar point on the other side of the crown. A mechanism is formed and the arch collapses. But this is not the only way an arch can fail. There is ring separation. And it's possible to include this in a finite element model too, by including joint elements or delamination planes. So this model includes that behaviour. The collapse load we saw to be about 38.5 tonnes is reduced here to about 28 tonnes. One of the beauties of FE is the flexibility to modify the model to simulate potential modifications to the real structure. In this example, dowels are simulated, stainless bars of 20 millimetres diameter at 300 spacing into the screen and at the four locations indicated. The intention is to resist ring separation. And indeed, the analysis shows that inserting such dowels increases the failure load from 28 tonnes up to 32 tonnes, closer to the original capacity, where ring separation was ignored. But the failure mechanism here is quite different from either the model which included ring separation or the model which excluded it. It's more brittle. It occurs more rapidly, with little deflection to tell us that the structure is in distress. With this information, a client might prefer to monitor a substandard bridge, not carrying out such repairs, rather than carry out repairs which could mean that failure can occur with less warning. In summary, finite element analysis can include crushing and cracking materials, ring separation, modelling of defects and repairs, and also the soil structure interaction. Now, some structural engineers tend to think in terms of representing the soil as a load only, and we would assume active pressure in some regions and passive pressure in other regions. The stiffness of the soil doesn't come into that. But of course, in real life, it's more complex. As the structure moves away from the soil, the earth pressures reduce from the at-rest pressure towards the limiting active pressure, Ka. On the other hand, when the structure moves into the soil, earth pressures increase towards passive, Kp. 
The actual earth pressure may be some intermediate value depending on the strain in the soil, depending how much the structure has moved. We can include the soil continuum in our finite element models, along with cracking, crushing and ring separation, to predict very well the failure mode and the collapse load. I've already mentioned here the use of continuum elements, joint elements, and several types of nonlinear materials for the masonry, for the soil, for the interfaces. The 2D finite element models which I've shown are, in these respects, quite advanced, but not the preserve of researchers. These analysis capabilities are available in user-friendly, commercially available software like Lucis, which most consulting engineers have access to. The paper is intended to help engineers understand those options and therefore approach these analyses with a little more confidence. But there's another massive issue. Masonry bridges are not just arches. It's an issue which is described in the UIC code. The arch barrel is usually assumed to be the primary element of an arch bridge. But above the arch, even modest span railway bridges often have internal spandrel walls directly below the rails. In small span bridges, the voids between the internal spandrel walls may be filled. In long span bridges, voided construction may be used. In either case, the internal spandrels have a huge effect upon the load carrying capacity of the bridge. It's the difference between this, without internal spandrels, and this, with internal spandrels. In fact, essentially, a different structure, where load is attracted to and resisted by the stiff internal spandrels. The arch barrel is certainly not the only primary structural element. The FE models I've shown so far in this presentation are two-dimensional arch models, and such models cannot take account of these stiffeners. And that goes for all two-dimensional analysis approaches or calculation methods, not just finite elements. But with finite element analysis, we have full flexibility in the geometry of the structure we model, along with the material types and all those other aspects which I've been describing. We can use solid models where the masonry and soil are both modelled using 3D continuum elements. That's good, but it's very time consuming. However, another good 3D approach is available. We can use shell elements for the structure and model the soil using trilinear springs. This doesn't give all the advantages of, of load spreading through a soil continuum, but it's practical and very efficient. For the masonry, the gradual through thickness cracking is possible with the special layered shell elements, which are available in Lucis. This three-dimensional model described in the paper uses the approach of layered shell elements. And this contour plot is showing cracking in lamina 1 of the shells. Some of the cracks might not go through to laminas 2, 3, 4 or 5 perhaps until the applied load is increased greatly. The model also uses the trilinear soil spring approach, which means that it's not necessary to model the entire soil continuum around the bridge. And that leads to fast solutions. Of course, the use of 3D continuum for the soil is also possible, allowing comparisons or more advanced models to be considered if it's deemed worthwhile. In conclusion, FE models of masonry bridges can include explicit modelling of the backfill, including dispersal load, stabilising effects and using non-linear materials such as more coulomb. Or the very efficient trilinear earth pressure springs, bearing in mind that it has some limitations. Modelling of the masonry using continuum elements and a special cracking and crushing material or alternatively very efficient layered 3D shell elements together with the same material model which would have been used for a continuum element model and complete flexibility of geometry, materials, supports and loading conditions. 3D models might include internal and external spandrels, skew angles, haunches, concrete backing saddling, over slabs, defects, repairs. In summary, arches form a vital part of our infrastructure whilst also being admired by many and they are a reminder of our heritage as engineers. A sustainable approach for the management of these structures relies on good assessment of load carrying capacities. Using FE we have the flexibility to reflect the true structural behaviour of the structure including crucial features such as spandrels 
and past repairs. Using FE we have the capability to represent the soil, masonry and interfaces in a comprehensive way. The paper explores these issues in more detail. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Find out more at lucis.com.